Good Tuesday evening, everybody. Live and direct from the News Channel 3 home office backyard. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik trying the old stereo approach here for tonight. We're looking at some quiet conditions for things outdoors for the most part at this point in time, but unfortunately not much that's going to be conducive to anything involving astronomical viewing. Why do you say that? Well, if you haven't looked outside recently, things are decidedly turning a little bit more cloudy out there as our next storm system gets set to move into the area. So your chance of seeing anything in the way of actual star gazing potential is going to be very low for this evening unfortunately and that again does not have to spell complete and total disaster if you want to stay indoors and learn a little bit about astronomy tonight would be one of those great nights to do some science online if you have not done that in quite some time with your kids and we'll give you a couple of ideas about where you want to go to and some information about what you can do to help promote science especially when it comes to things that are way out there that we need to know more about and the reason why we need to promote things like education, science, engineering, mathematics, stuff like that. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. Cloud cover tonight, and unfortunately plenty of it. Satellite picture is showing a decent amount of cloud cover moving our way with our latest storm system heading on through. So the clouds will be sticking around throughout the evening and into tomorrow morning. Therefore, I'm not going to show you anything in the way of satellite flyovers tonight because there's just no way you're going to be able to see anything out there. If a hole in the cloud appears, here and there you might get lucky but the timing would have to be exact and perfect and it's just not going to be a good evening for stuff like that on our weather bug cameras you can see again pretty solid cloud cover across much of the mid-south moving on through as of the time we record this at about five o'clock on tuesday evening and also on the Weather Underground system, Jet Jock's camera from around Collierville showing a decent amount of cloud cover out there for this evening. And looking down toward Ranger 2015's webcam into and around the area of Senatobia, Mississippi, also looking pretty quiet and socked in by clouds. Radar as of 5 o'clock showing again those showers moving on through the area, mainly northeastern Arkansas, and those are moving up to the northeast. So northwest Tennessee, the Boot Hill, southeast Missouri, and into around southern Illinois will be picking up those showers in the next couple of hours to overnight and more areas of rainfall and quite possibly even some thunderstorms mixed in with that so outdoor viewing for this evening just does not look like it's going to be possible. Uh, doesn't mean you don't have to be interested in astronomy or find something you can do. This works best when you go to a actual computer system, desktop or laptop on a tablet. It doesn't really work too well, at least it didn't too, do too well with my brand new iPad from the station. It's livemeteors.com and employs uh, antennas that are focused in on a particular frequency and scanning the sky, sending out a continuous pulse of energy, reflecting Reflected up into the skies, bouncing off parts of the ionosphere, and what it does, it picks up the meteor echo. When the meteors slam into the Earth's atmosphere during a meteor shower or just random uh, space junk out there dropping into the atmosphere, it ionizes that heat from that burning object, whether it's man-made or a regular stony or metal type meteor will ionize the atmospheric uh, molecules around it and those molecules briefly will help to reflect those original pulses of the radio waves set up that direction and cause them to come back to earth and be detected as a fairly ghostly whistle or a pinging sound if you've never heard this before and want to give this a try go to livemeteors.com this works again exceptionally well during meteor showers and also during cloudy skies so if there's nothing to do when it comes to astronomy and you still want to listen to what's slamming into earth's atmosphere at several hundred thousand miles per hour then you might be able to take a look at this if you have the opportunity to do so it's a great place to go to and really kind of ghostly to hear those echoes of the meteor slamming into the atmosphere that way curious enough to think that as the Earth goes along in its orbit every single day, those tiny little bits of whatever's left over from the creation of the solar system out there, every single one that burns up eventually falls down to the ground. So first of all, the dust in the atmosphere that you see accumulating on surfaces of your car dashboard or maybe your, the furniture in your bedroom, some of that is actual meteor dust from a long time ago or maybe just a few weeks ago, believe it or not. That's how that works. But then also one of the things is that 
after all that stuff goes through the atmosphere, becomes pulverized and drifts down to the Earth as microscopic dust, the Earth picks up 10 tons of meteors per day. So our planet is gaining weight as it goes throughout the entire solar system. The bigger ones that are out there... This graphic, courtesy of spaceweather.com, if you'd like to take a look at this one, this one shows near-Earth objects in and around the solar system. They're going to be coming close to the Earth. Now, an LD in the column that you see there is a lunar distance. That's how far away the moon is on average from the Earth. And a 2LD is, is one orbit plus another orbit of the moon. So two lunar distances is two times farther away from the moon from the earth that the moon is right now four lunar distances eight lunar distances you get the idea but the basic idea is that a lunar distance or even anything close to that is kind of a cosmic cat's whisker it's very very close and it's something that we need to be paying attention to for very good reason note the dates on there we have some very close shaves of these things coming up now nothing is going to be being placing us in direct danger for anything involving a collision or a catastrophic uh, science fiction type movie event but that's why it's important to know more about these things so we can track them and learn more about them they're called neos near earth objects and there are maps of them available out there at least the ones we know about and they look something like this the green ones are ones that come close to our orbit but are not a threat at this time yellows are the ones that come exceptionally close but once again are not a threat red ones are earth crossing the earth orbit crossing asteroids and there's a whole bunch of them out there but it's estimated that there's about a hundred thousand to over a million more just in the orbits that we're looking at right here that show us a little bit more about what is out there for danger purposes that's why we need more scientists that's why we need more engineers that's why we need more astronomers and people interested in science to examine and find better ways of charting these things so if there is a problem we know about it and far in advance and then hopefully can find a way to deal with the problem by being able to to set things up so that things are improving our chances for survival in this cosmic shooting gallery that we call a solar system. This is how dangerous it is out there. Again, nothing imminent, but it is something to think about. And that's why we need to promote education as much as possible because of these things wandering around out there. Some of them are about the size of a uh, grapefruit. Some of them can be the size of a city block or even longer than that. So that is something to really consider when it comes to science out there. If you'd like to see more about that, just search Near Earth Object Map on Google or your favorite search engine, and it'll come up with this map for you to show you a little bit more about what is actually out there. And coincidentally, when you're taking a look at something like that, again, that's kind of drawn not entirely to scale. It gives you an idea as to more about what is out there, but if you spread it out in the, in the real time, where it's millions of miles on a particular map, it's not quite as crowded, but they are out there, and scientists and astronomers have been able to show that they do come Come very close passing either in front of or behind our planet just by a days or even hours and just coming within one lunar distance is pretty dangerous for us just in case you know, anything can cause that thing uh, a little bit of a change in gravity one direction or another can take it farther away from our planet which will keep us safe for now but then later on that thing could swing back around again and come back and hit us or it could cause it to hit us directly and that if you remember what happened a few years ago i believe it was 2013 in and around russia where that one came down destroyed a lot of windows and caused a lot of injuries that's the type of thing we need to avoid and that's why we need more people that can look at science and say, hey, I want to know more about this and then protect the rest of us. So science and mathematics and technology, that's why we need to do stuff like that to keep everybody safe. And that's one of the things you can do indoors on a cloudy or rainy night is explore more about that and learn more about how you can help by contacting your particular con uh, congressional leaders, your Senate leaders, your teachers, anything in the way of local businesses to convince them that we need to promote more about education. It's a great way to do things and you can help on things like that to help make sure that we all stay protected. That again is a good thing to do when you're stuck indoors with a lot of cloud cover overhead which is what we will be doing until tomorrow at least and then the rainfall finally moves out of here so we might see some more satellites into Wednesday and or Thursday. Thanksgiving looks pretty clear as does most of the weekend but we have some more clouds and rainfall expected by Sunday so we might not see total clear skies throughout the weekend itself but we'll update you on that over the course of the next few days. Check out the again information from 
my social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, a whole bunch of other stuff. We try to promote astronomy and science as much as possible. And, of course, we'll have more on our astronomy blog here, Skyblog3, if you'd like to keep up to date with what's going on here. If you'd like to see more about the weather forecast, head over to my other blog. It's Weather Overtime, a in-depth look at what's going on in the Mid-South for weather purposes in and around the area. If questions, concerns, ideas, or even suggestions, complaints, if you absolutely must, contact me at austin.onic at wreg.com. We'll be glad to see what we do about making this your astronomy blog in the web in the Mid-South and keeping you updated on things that are going on up there so you and your kids and your grandkids can take a look around and see what is actually happening. That'll do it for this edition of Skyblog 3 from the House Onic Backyard, live and direct. I'm meteorologist Austin Onic. More coming up tonight and into the next several days when it comes to astronomy and science. Please remember to keep looking up.